We use electro gel because dead skin is really common on the scalp, usually quite thick, and this basically serves as a resistor for the electrodes to pick up the electrical activity, as does the skull. So there's a couple ways you can go about addressing this. One is to abrade the scalp, so actually take a blunt hollow needle and get in there with the electrode and just kind of back and forth, try to get some of the dead skin off, or try to have people comb their hair out first. And, uh, you know, that, that can help. But electrogel uh, sort of helps a lot with the situation by increasing the conductance between the scalp and the electrode and uh, keeping it there even if it's not a perfect connection. The electrogel is uh, similar to saline or salt water, just with a thicker consistency. Sometimes uh, different EEG setups will use an adhesive gel, usually that has an... I, I, from my experience, that has a medical purpose when you have to get very accurate readings. Um, there are also dry EEG setups out there. This is a newer technology. They use special gold electrodes and pins, and um, it is super convenient, um, but also potentially more prone to error. It's newer, and uh, it's an interesting direction to go, though. The pin is, in essence, trying to achieve what the gel is doing by keeping in contact with the scalp. The electrodes are like small blunt discs so they can, if you have, um, you know, curly hair or you have, even uh, if you're bald and you just have very thick skin on your scalp, they won't necessarily stay put and they won't get a good reading. So the gel creates that bridge and the pin is trying to do the same thing by just having that small surface area in contact. There are also, I believe, amplifiers built into the electrodes of dry EEG sets to try to facilitate that with the lack of gel.